Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with another three parts, with a, a part three of this three-part teaching. The fruit of the the fruit of Christ will make you separate and distinct from those who follow the letter of Christ, because they that are led by the fruit of Christ are in the spirit. They that follow the letter of Christ are in the flesh. They're disciples of the flesh. They're church disciples, while we that are led of the Spirit, we have to be discipled in the Spirit before there can be the fruit of the Spirit. Before uh, the fruit of the Spirit, which can be on, can be on display, which is Christ's Spirit. Let us go to 1 Corinthians 2.14. So when, when you go from the letter to the light, there's hostility between the flesh and the Spirit. There's hostility between those that follow the letter and those that are in the light. Because the letter cannot be used unlawfully against someone that's established in the light. They'll bring to light the hidden tactics of darkness that Satan is using behind the letter because he uses it unlawfully. Uh, remember, it is the gospel that is preached and the Bible teached. Anytime someone is preaching the gospel, anytime someone is preaching the Bible, that individual has never been saved. They have never been born of Christ. They have never been circumcised in their spirit, which is what physical circumcision pointed to. They have never been circumcised in their spirit because you don't preach the Bible, you teach the Bible, you preach the gospel. And your teaching, your ability to teach comes from your gift to preach. Okay, because when we're born of the Spirit, we operate within the gifts of the Spirit. We operate within the gifts of the Spirit. First Corinthians 2.14 For the natural man and woman receive it not the things of the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of Christ, according to Romans 8.9, which it clearly states, if any not, does not have the Spirit of Christ, they are none of his. Receive it not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto them, neither can they know them, for they are spiritually discerned. Romans 8, 9, for they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. Uh, I am a, a child of the promise, a spiritually matured child of the promise. And The spiritual things of Christ, the manifold wisdom of God, are for those that are in Christ, that are spiritually in Christ. The natural man, it's not talking about the flesh because the flesh is the male. When it says the natural man and woman receiving not the things of the Spirit of God, it's talking about us in our fallen spiritual state as men and women, where our spirit conformed unto the flesh due to sin. Whereas when we were in the light, the flesh was under the government of the spirit. Due to our fall from grace and our spirit into sin, sin took our spirit and conformed it to the flesh. So we became carnal in spirit. But we were limited to the natural. So we were called a natural man and woman because that's what we were limited to, the flesh. So the natural man and woman receive it not the things of the Spirit of God, because it is foolishness unto them, neither can they know them, for they are spiritually concerned. Why is it foolishness unto them? Because they're limited to common sense. They're limited to what is common. God is uncommon. They can't receive revelation. The natural male and female can only receive biblical information. They can only receive biblical information. This is why they follow the letter. They can have religion, but they can't have the light. They can have the letter of Christ, but they cannot in no wise receive the gospel of Christ. They're in a, a place where they're in uh, outer darkness under the law. They have not been born from above. Uh, Second Peter 2.10. 
2 Peter 2.10 says, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh. That's the, the fallen man and woman. In the lust of uncleanness. You're not in love. Anytime you're in that fallen state, you're not in love. You're in lust. You can't experience love. You can't even experience what it is to be in love. You, you, you're in your emotions. You're in your imagination. You're in the superficiality of your feelings. But you're not in love. Love is it. Uh, lust is a very decept deceptive thing. Lust is in the form of love, but without the knowledge of love. There's no light in lust. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They self-willed. The gospel is, is, a, is an offense to them. They want to stay under church authority, but they don't want the flesh to come back under government authority. Where the man and the woman can get free and live beyond their humanity as they were designed to do and not exist in that fallen dead state under the law limited to their hum humanity. Let us go to uh, Jude 1.10. Jude 1.10 says, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, spiritual things, because it is an offense to them. Who is he talking about? The natural male and female to whom which the manifold wisdom of God is foolishness unto them because they can't understand it. You see, when you start separating the male from the man, the female from the woman, your sex from your gender, this is all foolishness to them. Because they think the male is the man. They think the female is the woman. They think their gender is their sex. So when you start breaking it down to them, it don't make sense to them because it, they can't find that in the Bible. Neither can they distinguish the letter from the light. They don't know the difference between the Bible and Christ. They think the Bible is Christ. The Bible is an idol to them. It's an idol to them. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, spiritual things. But what they know naturally, what they know biblically, as brute beasts, in those things, they will corrupt themselves because they're operating in the letter without the light and they're corrupting themselves because they're leading to their own understanding and out there fishing to get people to join them little dead in religions and Bible-based religions are dead. It's not that the Bible is dead, but it's not alive either because the Bible is not the living word, it's the written word, but them dead in their sins and trespasses, okay, them dead in their sins and trespasses is using the Bible very unlawfully. I want to read 10 one more time. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, spiritual things, light. But what they know naturally, they speak evil of those things which they, which they know not. That's the light of Christ. But what they know naturally, the letter of Christ, as brute beasts in those things, they will corrupt themselves. They corrupt themselves because they lean to their own understanding in the flesh, which in the written word tells them not to do. The book In the book of Proverbs, I can't quite remember the verse. It says, where the verse is, it says, and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, in all the letter, acknowledge me and I will direct your path. And that path is the, is the spirit, but they're not acknowledging the Lord because they're using the letter contrary to the spirit. Let us go to Galatians 5, 16 and 18. Galatians 5, 16 and 18. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. 16, this I say then, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in love and you're not going to fulfill lust. Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit the flesh. These two are contrary one to the other.
These two are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. This is why the flesh has to come under the government of the spirit so that we cannot do the things that we would. We would not engage in acts of sin. See, we've been cut off from the from the root of sin and soul and body made alive from the fruit of sin. But we can still be seduced into an act of sin. An act of sin is, is, is what takes place in the flesh. But we're no longer in the fruit of sin in the spirit. This is why in 1 John it says that which is born of God cannot sin. Because we can't sin. Because sin can't come through our nature anymore because it's not fallen. Now, even though we can't sin, through us cannot be produced the fruit of sin, we can still be seduced and commit an act of sin. An act of sin. An act of sin is in the flesh. The fruit of sin is what separates you from the Lord. That's what comes through your spirit. And through what he did at the cross, we can never be separated from him again. Okay, but don't let your head get big and think that you can't uh, be seduced into an act uh, of ungodliness. All right. Let's go to Romans 5 9. Ro uh, Romans 5 9. Or oh, let's go to 18. Before, uh, but if you, are led, if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. You see, the flesh lusts against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. These two are contrary one to the other, that we would not do the things that we would, but. If you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. You see, if you're led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. But if you're following the letter of the Spirit, yes. If you follow following the letter of the Spirit by sight, then you're under law, shut up from faith. You're under law, outside of faith. And whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And all sin has already been judged to death under the law. You cannot get caught under the law. You cannot get caught under the law. And this is this is very important. This is why I'm, I'm glad I came back to 18 before I moved on. But if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. But if you're following the letter of the Spirit, then you are under the law. Then you are under the law. And there's penalties in the flesh to being under law in the Spirit. You Under law, you can't experience divine health. Under law, you can't experience divine wealth. See, divine health is rooted in the jaw of the Lord. Divine wealth is rooted, that's prosperity. And prosperity gives you the freedom to enjoy provision because you're enjoying provision from a place of wealth and not using provision as a substitute for wealth. That's idolatry. You see, when you're in divine health, you're enjoying food from a place of health and not using food as a source of health. That's idolatry. See, that's idolatry. We as kingdom men and women live independent of the flesh and enjoy the beneficiaries uh, of the flesh according to the fruit of the spirit because the flesh is the beneficiary of the gospel, but the flesh is not the gospel, you see. Now, let us keep going. Now we can get out of it. Uh, let us go to Romans 5, 9. Romans 5, 9. Uh, Romans chapter 8, 5 through 9. Romans chapter 8, 5 through 9. 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They're following the letter of Christ. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, they're being led by revelation of the Christ, of Christ. That's the fruit of Christ. For to be carnally minded, for to be carnally minded, that's the, the, the fallen spiritual man and woman, which is carnally minded, limited to the natural. For to be carnally minded is death, because you're under the law, under the uh, dominion of the spirit of death, you're in lust. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You're in the righteousness of the law, which is Christ. You're in love. And love is light. 
7. Because the carnal mind, the carnal mind is the enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Because the things of God are foolishness uh, to one in that fallen spiritual state. Because the carnal mind is the enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. 8 says, so then they that are in the flesh or they that are limited to the flesh in that fallen state cannot please God. Cannot please God. And if you're born of, of the Spirit or you're in the circumcision, which is to be born again, uh, Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3 says, one says to present your body as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, not a dead sacrifice. Well, how does your body become a living sacrifice? It has to be quickened by the fruit of Christ's Spirit. Once you cut off from the root of sin, your soul and body dies to the fruit of sin. But only your spirit is alive in Christ. And as you are transformed in the mind of your spirit, your soul is redeemed and physical body made alive in accordance with the fruit of the spirit. That's the first level. There's seven levels to go before you become a complete creation. Once you become a complete creation, you have become a complete Christian. You have been restored back to Christian in, to Christianity in every aspect you're Christ-like. But you're not through growing. You just you, you came to maturity, but you're not through growing because God is eternal. And we will forever be growing in the revelation of him. What did it say in the book of Genesis? Be fruitful and multiply. There's no expiration date on multiplying. We'll be multiplying throughout all eternity. Because there's no end to the revelation of him. All right. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can I please go? Oh, but let me, let me complete two and three. Two says, uh, and be not conformed back to this world. Don't conform back to, to, to the law where you're following the letter, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because that's how you're going to get the fruit of the Spirit without, through the renewing of your mind within. That's the mind of the Spirit. But be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you may prove, discern what is that good, just, perfect, mature, and complete will of God. Will of God. And it says, so let none of us think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. In three, for we have all been given the measure of faith. We have all been given the measure of faith. If you are in Christ, you have the measure of faith. But he manifests through us all through different levels of faith because we're all at different levels in our walk with him. All right. Nine, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Look at what it goes on to say in that same text. Now, if any man have not, now, if any man, and that covers man and woman, have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. He's not led of the spirit. He's still following the letter of the spirit. He's not led of Christ. He's still following the Bible of Christ. And we're out of that dispensation. See, we have all these uh, uh, Bible schools that people go to. And they come out worse than when they went in because a lot of these Bible schools came up in the time when in that dispensation and they've just been going on and on and on. I, I don't encourage people to go to Bible school. I encourage them to stay away from it. I encourage them to stay away from it because they're being taught contrary to the Spirit. Once they get into Bible psychology and Bible theology, that's it. That's it. They are, they are offended at the gospel. The gospel becomes nothing but an offense to them. Let us go to Galatians, uh, Galatians 6. 
7 through 9. Galatians 6, 7 through 9. As we come to a close, Galatians 6, 7 through 9. Six, seven through nine. It says, "Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man or woman it covers both souls, that shall he also reap. For he that sow to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. That's those following the Bible of Christ." But he that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. The, that's those that are led by the Spirit of Christ, by the fruit of Christ. 9 says, And let us not be weary in well doing, that's walking in the Spirit. For in due season, due season we shall reap if we faint not. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So it, it, it's a warning that God is not mocked. If you sow to the flesh, you're following the letter of, of Christ, you go of the flesh reap corruption. You go of the flesh reap corruption. But if you are led by the Spirit of Christ, you go by the fruit of Christ reap life everlasting. Life everlasting. You're going you're gonna to reap it in the flesh. See, whatever you sow, if, if, if you follow in the letter of Christ by sight, then you're sowing to the flesh under law by faith. But you got a dead faith. You're operating in a dead faith under the law. But if you sow into the spirit in grace, then you're going to manifest the fruit of the spirit. That's the fruit of life. But under the law, you don't manifest the fruit of life. You manifest the fruit of death. That's the fruit of depravity. And operating in that dead religious state, no matter what you can acquire outside of, of Christ, there'll be no enjoyment in it. Because sin takes the enjoyment out of everything. Because there's no joy in sin. Now, you can have the superficiality of happiness in sin, but you can't have joy. And guess what? Happiness don't last long because happiness is very superficial. It comes and it goes. It's like your feelings. It can change suddenly. You can be happy one second and sad about something the next. So don't get caught up in your feelings. Don't get caught up in happiness. You need a, 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 a solid foundation of joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that brings us to the conclusion of part three of this teaching. And I was glad to be able to share it with you. Love you in the Lord and see you in the next, the next teaching, in the next three-part uh, teaching. Love you much. Be blessed.